the word that you spoke on last Sunday yes. Amen. was the power of agreement. Yes. 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 And those of you who were in the service last Sunday, Amen. before he could even speak, hallelujah, the power of God began to saturate the building. We saw the glory of the Lord. So when Pastor got up, Assistant Pastor Chris got up, he said to Sister Lauren, who was the moderator at the time, he said, I agree with you that we need the power and the glory of the Lord to come in. Yeah. So when they stood in agreement, the house shifted. The glory of the Lord came in. So we ask the Lord all the time to bring back your glory so that it will overshadow us and overpower us. But the, for those of you that were sitting in the service, if you were sitting with your minds not alert or something else going on, you missed it. But now you came back. You have another opportunity. As I went to the scriptures, I was reminded, and Brother Chris, I, you were all up in my testimony and all up in my that stuff. I'm, I'm going to talk about that later. I was reminded of Abraham. You see, it's always good to go back to the big beginning mm -hmm. so that you can get the whole picture. You can, read, do, you can read during your daily prayer or study about Abraham's story. But I want to point out some things that to you that regarding the, his journey of faith, belief, and agreement. Mm -hmm. you never looked at it like that but when you spoke that it brought it back Genesis 12 now we're going to ride down Genesis 12 for just a minute and then we're going to arrive and park at Romans 8 Genesis 12 says now the Lord said unto Abram get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land I will show thee and make, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Abram was told to leave the land of his kinsmen and travel in obedience to God, whom he could not see physically, but could spiritually hear. He could have stayed where he was, but the voice and the power of God compelled him to move out of the land. He did not ask his father's permission to leave. But he gathered and left and, and gathered all that would go with him and he left the country. He carried away his wife and his um, um, nephew to the land of promise. And in those days, the family stayed with each other as they would multiply. So families lived close together in those days. They didn't go all over willy-nilly. They all stayed together. The patriarch, the patriarch, who was the father of the family, watched over his children and his children's children and future generations. Traditionally, fathers have represented and inspired the values of honesty, strength, responsibility, and more in their children and community while protecting them from the, the evils and the harms that go on in life today. Remember, Job prayed for his family. Remember, he was sitting in the house and, and he prayed for them, but it didn't stop the evil from coming. He still prayed for them. Abram didn't know where he was going, but like Abram, there may come a time, or for some of you, it may have already occurred when the Father will call you out from among friends and family to see if you will be obedient and agree to trust God in the journey. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Some of you may be separated yes, to come to go out from among those that you are familiar with. That's right. To go on a journey that God is the only one that can take you there. Amen. But you only have to be trust. in faith, believe, trust, and agree. Yes. Thank you, Father. We have a living example here among us right now. 
Southern Bishop James C. Brewer, who came to Camden to Morningstar from New York. He had heard from God and informed his bishop of the, the calling on his life. Hence, he sits with us today. Yeah. Thank you, Bishop. Yes, thank you, Pastor. For being and answering the call and agreeing to take those steps many years ago. Hallelujah. We applaud you, sir. Thank you, Bishop. The Bible says in Romans 12, 20 through 21, that he, who well, we're talking about is Abram, didn't stagger, he didn't waver, he didn't faint at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. You guys that are sitting here, we have to still give God glory no matter what is going on in our lives. When we give him glory, that allows God to do exceedingly and abundantly yes. above all that we have ever asked of God. Yes. So, furthermore, he was fully persuaded that what he, was, what he had promised, the promise came from God, that he was able to perform it. He received the call, and he answered the call. He became obedient and walked in agreement with God, the one that he could not see. But he could hear. Mm. Thank you, Father. He walked in faith and in the power of agreement. Yes. Now, as you know, this agreement with God, Father, when we agree with God, Father began to grow his family, his family line, so much so that he birthed Abram, birthed 12, the 12 tribes of Israel. He birthed out of his loins kings and priests and the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. That came through Abram's bloodline. Take note, Abram had to walk through some changes, like the evolution from a cocoon to a butterfly. The man to the man whom God wanted him to be. Yes. Amen. After leaving his father's house, he had to even part ways with the one that he brought with him, Lot. And it was it, it, the parting, when I saw the parting, when I read about it, it was like a, 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 a picture out of a Western movie that I like. I like to watch cowboy movies. I like cowboy movies. I like Westerns. <laughs> uh, some of you don't even know about a Western. But anyway, I like cowboy movies. And, and sometimes it says uh, um, um, when they don't have, they're not in agreement, it says now, this land ain't big enough for us, Pilgrim. <laughs> Talk about, it. Talk about it. Talk about it. So, Lot went left. <laughs> the Bible says that Lot lifted up his eyes and saw the plain of Jordan. Yes. It was beautiful and inviting. But he did not know what was in the land. He didn't know what it was in for. He went east towards Sodom. Little did he know about the men of the land. And the Bible says they were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. exceedingly. Mm. Their sins were so nasty until God said, I, I can't even look at them. But Lot saw the beauty but didn't see the animal part. How many of you know that all that glitters and gold? Amen. 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 Do you hear what I'm saying? All yes. that glitters is not pure gold. Mm -hmm. With this knowledge, many of you understand that it took the hand of God to get Lot out of the land of Sodom and out of the twin cities, Sodom and Gomorrah. It took God to take him out. Why? Because Lot saw with his eyes. He made a decision on what he saw. He did not consult God as to which way he should go. He did not ask God for his um, uh, 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 direction, nor was he in agreement. He saw with his eyes. How many of you, look at your last decision. Did you make it with God or without his leading? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm. What did you do? The Bible leaves a clear roadmap for us. Proverbs 
Proverbs 3, 5 through 7. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Seek him in all you do and he will show you the path to take. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. I'm speaking from the NLB and NLT uh, version. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord. Thank you. And lean not to our, thine own understanding. And he shall direct thy path. Mm -hmm. And I'm paraphrasing. In all thy ways. Acknowledge him. See, this thing can get us in trouble. This flesh can get us in trouble sometimes. Y'all, I'm going somewhere. Don't, don't, don't go to sleep on me. I'm almost done. I promise you. Still speaking of Abram's uh, uh, evolution, there was a promise that he would not be childless. Both he and Sarah laughed at the thought of being uh, having children at their age. Abram had his first child with Hagar when he was 87 years old. But Genesis 15 and 16. And he and his wife's names were changed. That's found in Genesis 17, 5 and 18. And he had his first wife, his first child with Sarah, the wife of the promise of the promised child at 100. My God. 87 to 100 for the promise to come through. My God. But he still stood in agreement with God. Yes. God promised him that I will show him, show you where to go. I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. I will make you a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. And I will bless all the people of the earth through you. That's what God told Abram. We are still being blessed. Hallelujah. We may be on the outside. We were grafted in, but we are still being blessed because of Abraham's obedience, his faith, and his agreement with God. Eight times God said, I will. How many times has God told you, I will do it if you just, uh, hallelujah, if you just trust me and stand in agreement with me. How many times did he tell you that he was going to do something for you and you decided to step outside of what God said to do? And when you did, you were in trouble. But if you will just stay in faith, hallelujah, and stay in agreement with God, I promise you he will do just what he said he would do. We sing that song. God is able to do what he said he would do. Hallelujah. Just put your faith in him. He will work it out for you. Yes, he will. God is able to do just what he said he's going to do. Yes, God. We wouldn't be here if God didn't say, if he couldn't do what he said he was going to do. That's right. You wouldn't be sitting here. Y'all, we would be sitting at home on the couch with a, something in one hand or popcorn in the other, what, looking at TV, a football game, or something or other. God has always been faithful, and he will do exactly what he said that he's going to do. With this, Abraham did not, did not falter. He said, is there anything too hard for God? Y'all thought y'all was too hard. But look what God did. He saved you. Um, yes. and brought you forth. Yes. When we stand and believe and be in agreement with God, we can be like Abram and be and do what he says that he's going to do. Yeah. I am certain that God who begun a good work in you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Jesus Christ returns. Yes. God has started a good work in you. Whether you agree with it or not, sometimes we look at others and we think they're doing it better than me. And sometimes the enemy puts that in front of us. Yes. And it causes us to step back. I'm moving, I'm moving from my notes. I can't. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, 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 we look at others and we think, I can't do that. What you have done is already come into agreement with I can't. But, Brother Chris, I had to do this particular verse of scripture. I can 
do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Last week, Brother Chris, I saw the power of agreement. When I began to say that scripture in my own way, on Monday morning, a sister called me and said, can we be in agreement? I said, yes, we can. Hallelujah. We can be in agreement. And I had a good day that day. Hallelujah. I had a great day. Can you be in agreement that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you? Uh, hallelujah. I, 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 I stood in agreement with God. And as the week began to progress on, the enemy came in, uh, hallelujah, and I missed it by a, a margin, hallelujah. I began, uh, my, my boss had, had told us, she said, we want this particular thing not to happen in operation. I heard the hens in the office begin to cluck, and they began to talk about it, and they said, well, we can do it this way, and we can do it that way. And I said, okay, we can do it that way, and, and, and they got the board solicitor, who is the lawyer, uh, who is a, mm, sometimes a liar, hallelujah, to say that, that he, he could, we could do it the way that we wanted to do it. Now, and I was the one that was able to push the button to get the operation started. Well, hallelujah, I pushed the button, hallelujah, but then the boss came back and said, I do not want that happening. I went, oh my God, I pushed the button, Brother Chris, hallelujah, but I began to pray. I said, God, in the name of Jesus, if there's any way you can make this not go through, I will be very, very appreciative, hallelujah. When I got, I got to work early the next morning, I, I went to my computer and I began to search for the email that I had sent out to the company. Hallelujah. Wouldn't you know when I got the email, hallelujah, the, the person that received the email said, would you send it again? It didn't go through. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. What I wanted, what I did, hallelujah, God yeah. stopped it in the beginning. Have you ever been in a situation where God has stopped something that you were on your way to do? He stopped you dead in your time. You don't have to say anything. Hallelujah. Somebody might not, not, not agree, but have you ever been uh, have you ever gotten yourself in trouble, Brother yeah. Hunter? Hallelujah. You didn't know how you were going to get out of it. Uh, but when you asked God and you came in agreement with what he said you were going to do, uh, hallelujah, he will turn it around and make it better. That's what he did for me. That's what I thought. Hallelujah. That's what he did for me, Shante. Hallelujah. When I was on my way to hell, hallelujah, and didn't know which way I was going, uh, hallelujah, when I bowed my head, uh, hallelujah, and I told you, Lord, save me, hallelujah. Hallelujah, we're coming out 
of COVID. Yes, we are. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're coming out. Uh, yeah. But you can't stay in yesterday's blessing. Uh, hallelujah. You won't work right now. You got to go ready, 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 ready yeah. to another level. Uh, God is taking us to another place. Are you ready to go? Will you take your mind? Will you change your mind about what you do? Hallelujah. Thank God do a great thing. We want to do exceedingly and abundantly. Above all that we have ever asked. Why have thought? Hallelujah. This is what God wants to do for you today, saints. Hallelujah. You don't believe it. Some of you come to the altar. Hallelujah. When we call for prayer. Hallelujah. You think if you get with a certain person that their prayers are going to work better than yours. Ah, but I tell you right now. God told me to tell you. Hallelujah. That it don't work that way. Hallelujah. You have to stand on the faith that God gives you. Because he gives us all a measure of faith. And when your faith, hallelujah, reaches up to God. Hallelujah. He can do mighty, mighty, mighty good things. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord on my soul. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to bless the Lord. Can you agree? 
Just 